Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaoqun in Beijing. In today's program, we are continuing with our major series about the Wuda Mountains. In 1403, Zhu Di ascended the throne, becoming Emperor Yongle of the Ming Dynasty. Three years later, he received an unusual kind of fruit as tribute from the Wuda Mountains. The emperor was so taken with the fruit that he lavished handsome rewards on the Wuda Mountains. Well, the fruit was the beetle plum, and Emperor Yongle's special fondness for it was associated with his beauty conscience. In the year 1399, Zhu Di was 40 years old. Under pressure from his nephew, Emperor Jian Wen, from all sides, he decided to raise an army and resist. It was a dramatic moment in Chinese history, and with it, Zhu Di took on the identity of God Xuan Wu. Because主地是一个打仗出身的一个将领，他手下的士兵啊，打仗的时候都要到真武庙、北京的赵应公啊、真武庙去拜真武神。现在他要起兵和南方的朝廷啊交兵，从势力上来讲是敌众我寡，处
Historical records state that the emperor received a lee in the hall reserved for the emperor's recreation, and that he asked him about the art of ruling the country and mastering one's self. Emperor Yongle was very pleased with Li Sushi, and he gave him many valuable gifts to take back to Mount Wudang. From that time on, whenever the beetle plum trees bore fruit, the fruit was presented to the emperor as tribute. Throughout the Ming Dynasty, countless officials, men of letters, and other prominent people, each with their own aspirations and dreams, climbed Mount Wudang to personally experience its wonders. Today, we can experience for ourselves something of their sense of wonder and appreciation through the poems they wrote. During the Ming Dynasty, on every grand occasion, the emperor would reward officials who made outstanding contributions to the realm with a gift of beetle plums. As all the officials at court viewed the gift of beetle plums as a great political honor, the small fruits were looked upon as rare treasures. The writings of the famous Ming traveler and geographer Xu Xiaoke are collected in the travel diaries of Xu Xiaoke. Xu visited Mount Wudang in the year 1623 when he was 36 years old. Afterwards, he wrote, There is a large beetle plum tree in front of the ancestral hall of the beetle plum deity. It is completely devoid of bark, and it towers aloft with its smooth skin shining. Its blossoms are similar in color to peach or apricot blossoms. When the mountain breeze sets the branches swaying, the sight is one of incomparable beauty. The ancestral hall of the beetle plum deity, which Xu Xiaoke passed on his way up the path to the golden summit, is the largest of the 16 ancestral halls on the mountain, and it is one of the best preserved. The ancestral hall of the beetle plum deity was built when Emperor Yongle issued an imperial edict shortly after Li Suzhi's visit to the capital. Many people find it a strange and puzzling fact that the time during which this beetle plum tree flourished coincides almost exactly with the rise and fall of the Ming dynasty. After the rise of the Qing dynasty, the tree suddenly stopped bearing fruit. This situation filled one poet with emotion and prompted him to write, the beetle plum tree used to be important, but it eventually disappeared. Today, there are no beetle plum trees to be found anywhere, yet many legends are still told about them. The tree's rise to supreme honor was very much associated with the wise Taoist Li Sushi. It was he who helped the Wuda Mountains benefit from the patronage of the main emperors. Every day whenever he has free time and no matter the season, Master Wang practices a Kung Fu routine of his own devising. He's been doing this for nearly 20 years. 600 years ago, Li Sushi also practiced a similar routine. After Emperor Yongle began paying so much attention to Mount Wudang, Li Sushi went into seclusion and lived in a hut beside Five Dragon Temple. In the 19th year of the reign of Emperor Yongle, the 93-year-old Li Sushi told his disciples, Our sect is flourishing, and I have no regrets. He then sat down in a meditative pose, and passed away. By this time, Zixiao Palace and South Cliff Palace had already been completed, and ancient Deity Road, the pathway that led up to the Golden Dome, had been paved.
你素汐他是一个呃长期没没有这个呃世俗生活的这样一个道士，是一个清修道士。他死了以后，因为他修炼的过程当中，呃，道教讲小周天、大周天的运转，是他的孤节，他的身体里边的机能和一般人不同，所以粉化以后呢，他的骨头啊是一种特殊的颜色，啊，那么。当时的人都认为他是成仙的一种标志。Li Suxi's tomb is right next to the Beetle Plum platform near Five Dragon Temple. Li Suxi went to Mount Wudang at the age of 30. The more than 60 years he spent on the mountain spanned two dynasties and the reigns of four emperors. Like the Beetle Plum tree, he finally blossomed and bore fruit. And in the end, he found his final resting place right next to the famous tree. 太子和皇帝怎么说呢？说，这个人真是一个忠君爱国的好人。说这个道士呢，忠君爱国，忠君，贡献郎梅这件事就是典型的体现。爱国，他一直为朝廷祈福，为皇帝祈寿，所以说是爱国。所以，以叔叔这个道士受到明朝皇帝特别重视，给他修了一个很大的一个墓，修了一个很大的一个塔，而且呢，专门有一块。碑竖在他的墓前，上边有皇帝的圣旨，也有朝廷祭祀他的整个过程。Today, inside the ancestral hall of the Beetle Plum deity, there is a statue of Li Suxi that commemorates his offering of the Beetle Plums to the court. Very old Beetle Plum trees can no longer be found on Mount Wudang, but fortunately, during the reign of Ming Emperor Jia Qing, a Taoist master from Mount Qiyun in Anhui Province visited Mount Wudang, and while he was there, he was given a beetle plum tree to take back to Mount Qiyun. In 1998, a beetle plum tree was taken from Mount Qiyun to Mount Wudang and planted in the ancestral hall of the beetle plum deity. Devout Taoists make pilgrimages so they can see this holy tree for themselves. When Li Suxi took the beetle plums to the imperial court, there was no way he could have been certain that the small gift of beetle plums would bring him great honor. He would have been even less able to guess that this fruit of immortality, a gift from the god Xuan Wu to mankind, would change the destiny of Mount Wudang in the way that it did. In the year 1406, Zhu Di made the decision to undertake a great project that neither his father nor any previous emperor had attempted. Fourteen years later, the purple forbidden city in Beijing stood complete. Two years after that, more than a thousand kilometers away, a dazzling complex of imperial temples known as the Purple Golden City stood on the tallest peak of Mount Wudang. In the winter of 2007, Mount Wudang saw the heaviest snowfall in 20 years. 600 years ago, on a winter's day like this 